Hey everybody, Nick here, and today, well, I got some, uh, well, wonderful, <coughs> ah, pardon me, Thanksgiving Terrible Knives Live special. Um, first off, though, before we go any further, um, as many of you are aware, uh, here in the U.S. of the A, uh, it is the Thanksgiving. This is a holiday during which we overeat and be grateful for things at the same time. It's kind of multitasking, right? It, it makes a good deal of sense. But um, today is a day for giving thanks, and I figure it's probably appropriate to do that. Ah, pardon me, on the channel as well. And not just, you know, in the, the, the culture, the society. Sorry, you're going to get my voice booted up here in the... <laughs> I haven't been talking too much yet today. Anyways, um, I wanted to show a little bit of gratitude before we go too much, uh, too, too, too much deeper into the terrible gear. Um, I am actually grateful for a great deal this year. Um, hey, Keith, good to see you. I, I am grateful for a lot of things. I'm grateful for my, my lovely wife, who is around here, my lovely friends, the, the, the people in my life who are bringing me some joy. I, I am grateful for the roof over my head. I am grateful for my work, even if it's kicking my... Mm, a little bit lately. I am supremely grateful for my Patreon patrons who really, really do make this channel possible. Um, that, 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 that is an absolute source of joy, not only the, the, the donation itself, but the fact that they would donate some of their hard in money and time to support me and my work. That's, that's absolutely amazing. I'm also grateful to all of my viewers and my subscribers. Um, the folks who take the time to leave a nice comment, to leave a thumbs up, to subscribe and whatnot. And the, the, the folks from all over the freaking world. I mean, I got representation from, I think, pretty much every U.S. state, but also people from Canada, the U.K., from Norway, Mexico, Argentina, Spain, Germany, and more and more and more. I, 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 I have had viewers from places I've barely heard of, and that's a beautiful thing. And of course, I'm I'm really grateful to the people who send gear to check out. Some of them enthusiasts, some of them makers. Um, there are some wonderful makers who send me stuff, like for instance, the uh, Spydeco Sage 5 Lightweight just arrived on my table yesterday. Check out my uh, sneak preview uh, for it. But also uh, the lovely viewers who send me stuff to check out, and that's, that's a beautiful thing. And frankly, I'm grateful for the overflow of wonderful gear that's currently uh, low-key drowning me, but it's the very best kind of drown, so that's good. I'm also really grateful for the opportunity to use the channel to do awesome things. One of those things actually just ended. This is a Hulk Blade Works Spectre. Um, this is, this is uh, what is it, 539. And I uh, put this guy up for a charitable donation uh, auction over on EDC bid. And it raised, thanks to my buddy David, who was willing to go the extra mile, it has raised $3,500 and 50, well, 35, 50 bucks for do, uh, in donations to the Texas Council on Family Violence, all of which to bring it home. That is an absolutely magnificent donation. That is a beautiful thing he's doing for the world, generally speaking, and the fact that he gets a specter out of it is is even better. But I very much appreciate the Holtz who donated the knife and to David, who was willing to go that extra mile to, uh, you know, to, to bring it home. That's an absolutely beautiful thing. Look, all of this is an absolute joy. The channel, my, the, 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 the work, I mean, you know, sure, I got that, I got stuff, I got, you know, little issues going on from time to time, but there, there's a lot to be grateful for. And as a guy who didn't know that he'd have a chance to find long-term happiness, you know what, I'm doing pretty damn good and I'm thankful for that. However, I also understand that Thanksgiving's not easy for everybody. And in a lot of ways, that's part of the reason I'm doing this live stream here. I mean, I know that a lot of people are probably going to be off having, you know, turkey of some variety, tofurkey, I don't know, I don't discriminate. But a lot of folks are going to be off, you know, doing things. But I know that for some folks, Thanksgiving ain't so easy. Um, maybe they're folks who can't be with their people today, um, whether they're, you know, stationed around the world, whether they're, 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 they're a lot of my uh, viewers drive truck, and sometimes they, they, they can't quite be home. Um, and there are people who don't necessarily have people to be home with, right? Right now, uh, folks with people who have had to draw a healthy line to keep themselves safe. That happens. It sucks, but uh, good on you for doing it. And frankly, there are probably people out there who are feeling right now like they don't have a whole lot to be thankful for. And you know what? I, 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 I've understood that feeling sometimes, too. But look, um, remember that Thanksgiving is what you make of it. Um, it's an absolutely wonderful thing, and there's always something to be thankful for. Maybe you've got a wonderful table to sit at tonight. Maybe you don't even celebrate Thanksgiving, so you're like, why are you ranting? Just show me a crappy knife already. I don't know. Um, maybe you're dining comfortably 
comfortably alone and maybe even hurting a bit. But look, regardless, I hope that you all can um, pull up a chair, so to speak, at my table here. And uh, although well, we won't have any turkey, we will uh, definitely be having some turkeys in a, uh, in a whole other way here. And we will celebrate a very important thing. And that important thing is one of the last, well, is the last thing I'm going to mention being grateful for here this evening. And that is the fact that I have a very, very special group of viewers out there. I mean, you guys are all special, 100 freaking percent. But I have an exceptionally special group of viewers out there who are not just looking at, you know, pocket knives. They're not just going to gas stations and getting gas. No, these are people who are out there scouting. They are out at the gas station going, I wonder... What horrors lie in that glass cabinet right behind the bongs? They are the people who go to the mall and pretend to be ninjas. Maybe they are ninjas. I don't freaking know. And they find the stuff that is absolutely freaking terrible. They scour the darkest corners of the internet for knives that they think might be even more terrible than anything else I've featured on the channel before. Um, you all know who you are. My buddy Keith has donated a whole bunch of stuff tonight uh, to, to help me out. But you know what? Uh, I am supremely grateful for you, and you know what? In honor of them, and in honor of all the wonderful people out there watching, I think it's time that we dive into some absolutely terrible freaking knives. So first off, though, uh, let me uh, get everything pulled up here so I can see your comments as we are going along. Uh, let's see here. Come here, my videos. Pulling up the... There we go. Beautiful. All righty. Um, Mall Ninjas, check it in. And by the way, feel free to throw in your comments, and maybe a little later if I run out of terrible gear, although I sort of suspect that my, my crap runneth over here. But nevertheless, um, you know, feel free to leave a comment, and I will do my best to respond in good time. But anyways, first off is a batch of knives from my good buddy Keith. He says, Nick, sorry it's taking so long, but after the fury, it's very hard to beat. And this is the person, by the way, this Keith is the person who donated the fury knife. This was the knife with an integrated throwing star in the pivot area. That's the kind of quality that we're working at here. That's absolutely amazing. Um, but he says, I hope that you enjoy each of these hand-picked gems. Um... <laughs> Oh, boy. Um, enjoy. Thank you very much, Keith. All right, let's go on ahead and take a look inside this lovely package. I have not looked through this box. This box is set sealed until this morning, and we will see just what awaits me inside this box of joy. Let's go on ahead and start off with this one. Oh, God, they're all in a little note. Uh, Nick, I'm sick of the crazy things that people have been sending you. This is a real user. Its small size is just what you like for your LBH, which of course means little gear reviewer hands. Um, oh boy. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yes. This looks like a real user. Oh, look at that centering. Okay. So to start with, um, what do we got here? We have a, um... Okay, I complain regularly about inlay fitment. You know, when people will do an inlay, for instance, and there will be little tiny gaps or something like that going on there. You know, uh, let's see. Do I have any bad inlay fit on the table at the moment? I do not at the moment. That's kind of actually a wonderful thing. That's another thing I'm freaking grateful for. Um, but the Purple Ninja has indeed entered the room. What we see here is a wonderful bit of inlay fitment right there. We can see that wonderful little gap, and that's a great thing because, you know, what you can do is you can, let's say you need to use some excess lubrication or something like that later on, you can just pour it right into there and it'll be stored for later on. Um, so, yeah, that's an absolutely wonderful uh, sort of situation there. We've got ourselves some speed holes in the back, coupled with a extra thin lanyard hole, which actually isn't intersected by the blade for a change. That's a start. Is the blade... Yeah. Blade is absolutely impacting this backspacer in the back there. That's that's pretty excellent. Um, we got little shades of other knives in... Oh, 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 yes, indeedy. Oh, this is just getting better right here. So we flip this out. And we see that this is a police tech. Mind you, it's not a police tech. No, 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 no. It is a police tech. I love the fact, that I don't understand the fact, but I love the fact very, very much that this is including scare quotes. What I kind of suspect went on here is that somebody sent, you know, like somebody who had absolutely no idea 
uh, what the English language is. Ask somebody who had a rough idea what the English language is, what sounded cool that they could print on the knife. And that person sent back in an email, in quotes, police tech. And the person, again, not understanding exactly what the English is, um, went on ahead and threw that on there. That's absolutely, sp oh my God, that's amazing. Um, is there a, yes, okay, that I is actually separate. So we have here the police tech. Now, of course, what we have here is uh, th th there is more beauty because, of course, this is an assisted knife. And, um, uh, you know, because, well, unfortunately, that's sort of the... Oh, look at... Well, that action's a... That's a thing. Does this thing lock up? That's a no. Okay, lock up is uh, suspect in the police tech. I'm sorry, police tech. I, I, it's not just the police. Um, This guy has... <laughs> <laughs> one of the scales is substantially thicker than the other one, likely to accommodate the assist and the inlays. Uh, and then and the fact that the, the blade centering is not a thing. And actually, when I pull this out, yeah, indeed, we do see right inside of here exactly where that blade impacts the inside of the, 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 the line of there. That's, that's nice. Um, oh, man, this is just... Oh, oh, did it lock up for a second there? No, okay, never mind. Yeah, the police tech is definitely a thing. Um, ooh, tip down only, that's another good sign. Oh, I didn't even read the back. Uh, 1025 surgical steel. Okay, that sounds kind of like an address. Uh, limited edition. You know what, I'm actually okay with that for the first time. And uh, handcrafted in China. Thank you very much, Hendrix Flips. I appreciate the uh, super chats. Um, that's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, the, this is a, a line of locking slip joint. Eh, no, that one's okay. Um, oh, boy. They locked up that time. And then the action. Oh, that's some serious action right there. Oh, what a joy. Um, so we have the um, police action. <laughs> police action. Yeah, this could probably use a police action to uh, intervene here. Oh, boy. Okay, so that's how we're starting things off with the police tech. Um, oh, and the clip screws, too, are just mangled. This is spectacular indeed. Thank you very much, Keith. But this is the very first in what I imagine is going to be a cavalcade of crappery uh, that goes on here. Uh, what is next in here? We have... Um, this little guy right here. Oh, God, they're all wrapped in notes. This is going to be a thing. Uh, war tech for the tactical side. So we've gone from police tech to a war tech. So we're upgrading here. We, this is a militarization sort of situation we've got going on here. Um, so... Hmm. Wait, what? Okay. Usually, I feel like I understand pocket knives. Um, usually, I, 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 usually, I, I, this has two blades. Um, what are we doing here? How are there two blades, two pivots? I gotta say, I'm, uh, you know, in the name of being fair, this little milling pad in here with the circles around, the, that, that's kind of, that's kind of cool looking, right? Um, like at this level, it, it, this could be on the wrong side of the custom knife gas station continuum right there. So this is, uh, this is definitely a thing. Um, oh God, look at that blade shape. Did that lock? No. Okay, that's okay. Oh, okay, it locked that time. That's nice. Okay, so we've got ourselves a blade that is, um, a thing with the... Oh, wow, that's a thick edge. Um, it is, of course, uh, 1085 surgical steel. Uh, it's not just any 1085, it's 1085 surgical, which means that you should buy it even less. That's, that's nice. And then the other side, is this assisted? So it is assisted, but it's just assistance. It's not like I'm going to help you. It's just like I'm going to give you some assistance. This is assisted in the same way that, you know, your buddy offers to help you move. And then they just drive over and they stand around while you put all the heavy stuff in the box and then stay around for the pizza. So it's that kind of an assist. It's like, yeah, we're helping you out a little bit, but not all that much. That's fine. Oh, God. The blades actually do kind of line up. Are these... 
I guess the nice part about this design is that you can't spine whack it because you're always on the proper side for 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 something. Um, that's that's a thing. Um, this serves very effectively as a um, like I feel like I could use these holes to lash this to a steak of some variety, and not like a steak in the sense of a, a former cow, but a steak in the sense of a large stick, and then potentially have it sort of um, like use it for like roasting something over an open fire oh yeah both blades add up to one spear point that that's fair that's fair maybe this is the uh spear of uh oh yeah yeah i have no idea what this is the spear of but anyways it is the wartech no quotes by the way usa the wartech usa right there um that, that that's a beautiful thing combined with this freaking scorpion with the the unapologetic machining marks there this is yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have a strong sense as to whether this counts as a double-edged blade. Um, that's... yeah. Wow. Nice. I support this entirely. This could actually be a... Uh, it's probably not hard enough to be a glass breaker. Is that dangerous? Uh, well, yes, of course. Hey, tip down carry... I'm sorry, tip up carry. That's actually kind of impressive, right? Um, at the crate is a carving fork for the turkey. Yeah, I will uh, present this to the... Wait a second, hold on. One of these blades is longer than the other one. Like, seriously, look at this. One of these blades, this blade is slightly longer than the other one. And in fact, you can see that even where the thumb studs are. That's pretty spectacular. I... Okay, nice, nice! You know what, the... And the problem is I keep going to close it. You Oh, is it sharp? I should check that. Keith, you know, you, you know I appreciate you, but I'm going to go ahead and use your note for sharpness. You know, it's not going to damage the note anyways. I think that removed a little rust. Yeah, it did. That's nice, at least. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, and I should check the... Um, oh, what is it? The... Uh, Police tech for sharpness. No, 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 no sharpness there. Uh, and actually, oh, just to, 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 there's a, a, a contrast, so to speak. Uh, here is what an actual knife should cut like. Yeah, uh, that's a slightly different thing. This is a Chaburkov small stridge, by the way. Review with this guy coming up very, very soon. Um, yeah, that's going to be a thing. Oh, okay. So we're two in, and we're already, we've had the police tech, we've had the war tech. I'm kind of hoping that the next one is like the peace tech, maybe the hippie tech, something along those lines. I think that would be, that would be kind of excellent. So let's go on ahead and put these two off to the side here. Um, Fidel Cashflow raises a very valid point. Love these streams. I don't have the best knife in the world, but at least I ain't carrying this thing. Fidel, you know what? That's an absolutely wonderful and astute point that you make there. You know, I oftentimes show off completely ridiculous high-end pocket knives on the channel. I, you know, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, that's a thing. Anyways, I occasionally show off completely bourgeois, rococo sorts of stuff. Um, and, you know, sometimes people feel bad, like, oh, yeah, but I think it's a wonderful thing. As long as you are not carrying around a police tech, so to speak, because remember, you can get a good knife for the same price as you get. Hey, it locked up that time. One of these bad boys. Um, th th that's an absolutely wonderful thing. Um, and thank you very much there, Conan Only. I appreciate that. Towards more high-end quartz goodness. Well, here's some high-end quartz goodness right there. So, uh, yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. All right, we got our next one coming up here. Uh, let's see here. Mill spec. Oh, good. Mill spec. Ha, ha, ha. Pull the pin and see what happens. Great ergos. So, okay. Now, generally speaking, anything that comes with a note that says, pull the pin and see what happens, is something you should usually avoid. That's This would usually be a moment where I just go on ahead and call the bomb squad. However, my buddy Keith is, um, he is known to me, and I assume that he is not trying to kill me at the moment. Um, but we will, we, we will go on ahead and see. Let's play this one by ear. I'm going to set this down gingerly just to make sure that we're not, like, having to get the robot out here or anything like that. All right. All right. I. You're making me question myself here, Keith. <laughs> I just finished talking about, oh, this can't be dangerous. Okay. 
what the heck is this supposed to be? Grenhand Frag M twenty six A one Comp B L S fifty sixty one B. This appears to be a pocket knife. Or at the very least, there doesn't appear to be a whole lot of room for explosive material up in here. Um, this is... What the hell is this? Oh, God, I bet this is an automatic knife, and when you pull the pin, it deploys. Okay, I mean, to, 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 to start with here. I imagine the thought process. Let's think, let, let's put ourselves into the mindset. Let's imagine ourselves in, in the world of the, the designer of this knife. And they were thinking to themselves, wow, you know what? We need to make something new for the mil-spec line of, the, of pocket knives. But how can we make something that's more illegal than it already is? I mean, it's already edged, right? Um, so that makes it illegal in some places. Maybe it's already assisted. Perhaps it's even automatic. But they're thinking, you know, how could we make the TSA even more frightened of a pocket knife? And then they realized... Oh, I've got an idea. Let's do this. Um, this... Okay. So, everybody, I, I, I deeply apologize. If this is the uh, very last message that you get from my channel, um, that please tell my wife I love her. That way it'll be all live-streamed. And, um, that, 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 you know, uh, that, that you all have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your lifetimes. But, nevertheless, I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to pull the pin here. And, um, let's see what happens. <laughs> okay so <laughs> we do indeed have an automatic knife where the the, the pulling the pin finds the <laughs> Okay, so first off, let's let's talk for a second about ergonomics. Let's talk for a second about ergonomics here, because look at the the, the shape of this thing. Already, we've got like the, the, this has roughly the ergonomics of a bag of Legos, um, just on the handle itself. But then you've got this clip, which is sticking up so high up into the palm swell. Keith, you have outdone yourself with the mill spec here. Um, <laughs> So the ergonomics on it are, are at some level surprisingly not awful because, you know, in a hammer grip, or I'm, yeah, in a hammer grip, you're someplace, or I'm sorry, this is a saber, the hammer grip is absurd. Um, but in a saber grip, you're almost kind of okay, except for the clip and all the, the other stuff. But oh my God, that's, that's amazing. Next thing we got a little, have a little sit down fireside chat about is this little guy, Aquid, is this more ergonomic than a small and cozy? Yes, somehow it likely is. Um, then we got to talk about this portion right here, which appears to be a sharpening choil, except it completely and totally neglects to actually get to the area of the plunge grind, allowing this knife to be unsharpened up to about here, which is... That's pretty spectacular. I, I I appreciate very much that they were willing to include all the, the, the aesthetic benefits of a large, prominent sharpening joil with none of the functional meat. Um, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Let's go on ahead and check to see the sharpness of this guy. One more time here. Okay. Yeah, that's, um, that's a thing. Like, it doesn't even... Is there an edge? Yeah, there's an edge. That's something, at least. This is edgy as heck, actually. Let's be real. Okay, um, how's the lock-up? You know, it locks up. That's nice. And then when you close it again... Wait, what? Hold on. Here's my question. Is this actually an automatic knife, or is this an assisted knife? I mean, legally speaking, I am not a lawyer. Um, but... Legally speaking, you are, uh, one of the main distinctions is like bias towards clothes, I believe. Um, and this guy appears to, could it be the case that when I'm pulling this pin back, I'm effectively, so this is just, okay, okay, hold on, look at this. This is actually not the, well, no, this is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. But, um, this is 
differently dumb than I expected. Because what this is is not an automatic knife. This is not a knife where the, the, this little pin mechanism here is holding the blade in place. This is actually an assisted knife. And what this pin is doing is it's allowing the knife to, it's basically pulling, it's serving the same function as pressing the flipper tab does on most knives. So actually, in a way, although this would qualify, I think, as an automatic under most legal sorts of situations, um, and... <laughs> One of my viewers who is an actual lawyer says, I am I am a lawyer, and even I won't comment on whether that's automatic or assisted. Yeah, look, you just have to assume, look, this thing is 50 shades of freaking illegal no matter where you're at. It's a knife that's shaped like a hand grenade. This thing is probably, yeah. Anyways, um, but nonetheless, when you pull this down, this simulates a flipper tab press, which engages the assist mechanism here, rather than being some, you know... <laughs> <laughs> T-Dub says it's dumb in a not-so-dumb way. You know what? I agree. Um, oh, man. And I'll say the action on this, like the ergonomics of, of deploying this are kind of spectacular because you can't hold it like in any of the ways that you expect you should be able to hold it because this is the only way, even then, it's not ergonomic. Um, it, but you have to do something like this where you're like pulling down that way. Maybe there is a... Maybe there is like a, can I do? Ah, there we go. Okay, so there is a grip where you can kind of, oh, yeah, yeah. This is a thing. Um, Keith, I, I have to ask you, where the heck did you find this? Like, what search term did you use to come up with this, hmm, this item, this item? Um, oh, boy, this is an item. That's for damn sure. This is an absolute unit right there. And the back side, by the way, is not sharpened. Actually, neither is the front side. So I guess that's a... Oh, wow. This is spectacular in all the very best of ways. Um, Super Chat is free today. Okay, thank you very much, Mill. Uh, anyways, that, um, that's what he said. I don't know if it actually is. Anyways, um, thank you very, very much, everybody. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it jumped out of my hand. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go on ahead and to, to prevent myself from getting blown up by this thing. Although, actually, it's dull, so what's it freaking matter? I'm going to go on ahead and put this guy <laughs> off to the side here, and we'll move on to the very, very best, um, uh, the, 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 the very, very next little bit of joy here. <laughs> my cup runneth over with crap. Oh, my God. And I should just throw these boxes over here. <laughs> Nick, you throw grenades after you pull the pin. Okay, so I should pull this and then just like... <laughs> Yeet! Get the heck out of my life. <laughs> I like it. I like it so very much. <laughs> Keith, what the hell? Okay, so that's going to be a tough act to follow, but we're going deeper and deeper into the box here. Um, and that, 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 that's a terrifying thing. Um, let's go on ahead. Hold on. Oh, yeah. We got one more from Keith over here that I can't forget about. Um, oh, let's see what we got here. Uh, Nick, this super knife has the best ergos going. I'm sure you will enjoy this one. Pick this little guy up from the same store as the Fury. <gasps> okay, I don't... <clears throat> I, I'm trying to remember what all happened to the Fury. I think I might have disassembled it, and it didn't quite reassemble itself. Um, but this Super Knife... Oh, God, it's actually called Super Knife. <sighs> Keith, you have outdone yourself here today. Like I'm thinking he's saying, like, Super Knife. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, he's making fun of it. Nope, <laughs> Super Knife. <laughs> Best quality stainless steel blade. Oh, yes, indeedy. Um, <laughs> thank you, Mo. Oh, God. Is that the Hells Angels logo? <laughs> Somebody's got to get themselves sued off of this. Well, probably not sued, actually. Oh, God. This is... What the heck is this? It's like a... Is this a swayback? I, it's a Wartech. Hold on, hold on. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm calling BS here. 
this is a, a, a super super knife war tech super knife war tech guys make up your mind here is it super or is it war design? ah that's and that is more than a passing resemblance to a certain bit of <laughs> Like, yeah, sure, you might anger you might anger a certain prominent biker gang by carrying this, but at the same time, when they come and they take you out, you you're gonna be grateful because, economically speaking, you're already dead. <laughs> what the heck are you thinking, economically? Because okay, let let's hold is that a folding mustache? <laughs> Hey, only if you're Elijah Isham, right? You could totally picture Elijah Isham walking into a show wearing this as a mustache. Oh, God. Um, Isham designed well, demon possessed. Yes, I can see that. Oh, man. So it's a war tech, that's for sure. Um, it does, in fact, feature an opening hole, which is amazing. Um, oh, God. Um <laughs> <laughs> and look, I got to say, look at this freaking skull on this guy, because he doesn't look super, like, this skull looks like he's cringing a little bit, right? This looks like the cringe emoji to me. Like, th this skull looks like he's looking at himself going, oh, God, they made me. Right? Right? Am I absolutely, and by the way, as Blade Man points out, I don't want to diminish the Hells Angels by saying they might carry something like this, but this is a cringing skull knife. And then on the other side, yeah, he's got an eye patch there, which is amazing. Oh, God. And then the line is just hanging out in the back like, hey, you know, <laughs> I'm picturing the, the, the discussion here. Hey, I designed you a brand new knife design pattern. Oh, but we need it to be a little bigger. Yeah, but it's lunchtime, so you just just tape it on there. Just take it on there. Oh, my God. So we've got the cringe skull here, complete with... There is a little bit of H.R. Geiger thing going on there, but then feathers. So is this supposed to be... Uh, uh, uh... Anyways, this looks like a Zelda enemy is the other thing it could be. Like, I'm pretty sure I fought one of these guys in, like, freaking Ocarina of Time or something like that. Um, oh, man, and then, God, the ergos on this are just so brutal. Oh, but it does have a lanyard hole. That's nice. Um, oh, now we need to see. We got to check the sharpness on this guy because, and by the way, the, the, the only natural way to hold this guy is to have your finger here, but this is, well, we'll find out if it's sharpened blade, but it's blade, the very least. So it's like there really is not a way. Like, this could almost be comfortable if this were a finger choil, but it isn't. So it's just like there's there's not a way around this. It's just kind of a thing. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Wait a second. Back it up. Back it up. There is like a quarter, maybe a half of an inch of this blade right here that is sharp. That's amazing. Hey! Eh? Kind of, kind of sharp. Not like super sharp, but kind of sharp. <laughs> if Elijah Isham did meth, we would be what happened. Drugs are bad, kids. Oh, my God. This super knife. Oh, wow. I... Ah. Uh. Uh, so, out of one box, by the way, I'd just like to highlight the, 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 the wonders of my, my buddy Keith. Oh, God, the box isn't empty yet. Okay, this isn't in a packet, but I'm sort of curious what this is about here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. This is a um, pocket knife. Huh? <gasps> Look at that blade play. That's amazing. This has more play than like a freaking playground. This thing is abs vertical and horizontal. It's pinned shut. Look at that. The pivot is the lanyard or is the, the, the pocket clip hole or uh, 
pocket clip hole. Like, I was thinking to myself, okay, Keith, you know, okay, come on. This is just a little basic plasticky pocket knife. How can this be that terrible? How can this stand up to the other joys in this freaking box? And we thought we were... <laughs> it's been downhill from here. But nevertheless, I I'm thinking to myself, oh, come on, Keith, you're slipping over here. How no wonder you didn't put that in a special pack. But then I, I start looking at the technical merits of it. Wait, hold on. What's he saying? Look, read the warning on the tag. <sighs> warning for California users. That's me, by the way. Pursuant to California Health and Safety Code Section 25249.6, distribution of this product warns you that this product may contain the distribution warns me the distribution warns me like the fact that they distributed this knife warns me that this product may contain substances known to the state of california to cause cancer and or reproductive toxicity <laughs> You know, to be fair, a lot of YouTube commenters tell me I shouldn't read, so they're helping me out over here. <laughs> uh, warning, sharp edge, handle with care. Okay, hold on, hold on, back it up. Oh, beep, 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 back it up here, hold on. Warning, sharp edge, handle with care. Uh, to start with... No. That is not in any way, shape, or form a sharp edge. As a matter of fact, even the serrations are too dull to cut paper, which is impressive because serrations are... But, okay, but backing it up for just a second, putting aside the fact that it's saying, why is there a picture of a guy wearing safety glasses on a sharp edge warning? If it were caution, explodes with acid. Then you put a guy wearing safety glasses. But why do you put a guy wearing safety glasses on a knife with freaking... Shop at maybe that's for the California cancer compounds. Maybe this is is as I'm playing with the blade, spraying cancer in California all over me. Thanks, <laughs> everybody who's stopping in. Oh, good to see you. <laughs> Only in California, indeed. Um, ergonomically speaking, it is. Um, you think the paper cut that knife? Yeah, that's actually a good question. If I jam the paper at this hard enough, is it going to leave a dent? Like, seriously, I'm... That should freaking work, okay? I'm sorry, this is... Did they even try to shop in this? They really didn't. Like, this is just... Yeah, that's a thing. It's the designer's maker's mark. Actually, it does kind of look a little bit like the smock knives thing. Maybe they're ripping it off a little bit there. <laughs> oh, God. It's because looking at this knife causes cancer. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Cancer isn't funny, but <laughs> this knife is. So anyways, putting aside the fact that this has probably given me all sorts of different flavors of reproductive malaise at the moment. Uh, we got to we got to return back to the normal to the, the situation here. The whole thing appears to be badly injection molded. You can see right here with a guy with a snipper just like ah eh, screw it and went at the rough area. Um, we have ourselves a back lock, which is fine. Um, but does it actually lock? That's a question here. Are we locking? We're not locking necessarily, but this did reveal a different kind of play. You know, I'm usually used to knives having blade play, especially in this series here, and this has plenty of that. But uh, clip play, that's kind of new and different to me. I feel like this is kind of an interesting thing. It's kind of like um, it, it's a variable angle carry sort of situation. Um, <laughs> oh, what a joy. Uh, Adam Crossfire says, I bet Nick's wife's tongue is sharper than that knife after he buys another Omega. Um, a, to be clear, uh, Adam, I, I, I talk about all of my purchases with the wife, and she's very supportive of my work on the channel, and she's a very kind woman overall. Uh, so, uh, And the other thing is her tongue is not, I believe, of an alloy that is hardenable and thus sharpenable. So, um, you know, do keep that in mind. <laughs> it has an FRN handle. <laughs> Frick, really? No! <laughs> God, that's amazing. Um... Yeah. Wait a second. And so the clip is being held on by the pivot. That's excellent. Wait, hold on. How far deep, how deep does this thing go? 
Okay, so I can do this. Wait a second, hold on. I just fixed the blade play. Well, at least the horizontal blade play. By turning the clip in this way, I actually tightened up the pivot here because the pivot and the clip screw are the same thing. So this is actually a knife. I like this. This is brilliant because in this position, you have a great deal of blade play. But if you want to adjust that away, all you need to do is pull the clip back and then you've removed the blade play. And so now you've got yourself a blade play lever where it's like I can increase or decrease the pivot the tension just by moving the clip. This is innovation, people. This isn't just a knockoff of like the, oh, I don't know. I'm sorry, not a knockoff. Certainly, it wouldn't be that case, but we could say it was perhaps inspired by the, um, oh, say, Spyderco Dragonfly. I don't know, just, just, just floating that one out there. But yeah, we have ourselves a variable pivot adjustment. Almost caught the tip on there. Good thing it's not sharp. And now there's no play. That's amazing. Absolutely ingenious work. Does it work in the other direction, too? Yes, it does. And now, now look, now it's a, a blade guard. So that way, if you're out there having a, like, if you're sword fighting with this guy, the other guy's sword is going to be caught right here and it won't hit your finger. This is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. Uh, Keith, this might be the most brilliantly designed knife you've ever seen. <laughs> God. Can you still open it? Just barely you can open it with the safety guard open. Oh, that's amazing. Can you take it all the way that way? Oh, but see, now, actually, in this position, you have a um, uh, an angle angle setter yeah, for sharpening. That could work. Yeah, that could work, actually. Hold on, hold on. Let's give, let's give this a try. What are we looking at here? Extra course. Yeah, that sounds about like this channel, right? So if we put this here, and then we use the angle guide... Uh... Is this steel hardenable? Like, is this... I'm genuinely wondering to myself right now whether this steel actually can be sharpened. I... It's sort of chisel ground. Yeah, I'm not thinking this is hardened steel. Yeah, not thinking this is hardened. Okay, that's cool. That really just adds a little bit of a... Um, that, that adds a little bit of mystique, I feel like. Um, oh, oh, the centering, that's... It is absolutely and totally hugging one of these liners. That's, that's nice. That's real nice. So I am, um, I am duly impressed here. Not only has this thing, because I live in California, um, given me cancer because I'm not wearing goggles, I am, however, wearing a Batman mask. Is that going to save me? I don't know. But either way, um, I... I, I, I the fact that we've got ourselves a lever-based pivot adjustment, that's just great. Which also serves as a blade guard. Oh, that's great. What a beautiful scraping sound touching my soul. Yes, indeed. That's, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> or that's the other possibility. The steel is so hard that the diamonds are failing to touch it. That, that's, that's another very real thing. So, ah, oh, that's beautiful. Now, I, I have one more knife, actually, from my buddy Keith. He has just, this package is hot off the presses from my buddy Keith. Uh, let's see here. Do I actually have a knife to open this with? Yes, I do. Uh, let's see here. Let me grab something completely and totally excessive. Sure. All right. Um, let's go ahead and put that there. Uh, Keith, I think I just cut your letter in half. Sorry about that. I'll just assume you can fill in the blanks, right? <laughs> All right, let's see what we got going on right here. All right. Uh, let's go on ahead and open up this very last knife from my good buddy, Keith, who has provided me with, oh, so very much crap here this evening. Um, uh, hold on, what? Nick, after reviewing your review of the Dalica, which of course is a reference to the dollar store Spyderco Delica. The maker must have listened. You faulted the Dalica for the pocket clip, which is fixed, the pin construction, which is fixed, the serrated blade, which is fixed, the blade steel, which is fixed. Now it's Maxam, which is a lot like Maxim Met. Notice the steel is rated R. That's pretty serious. 
must be some good stuff. Have a great day. Enjoy this solid gem, Keith. Maxim. Now, mind you, um, we can actually upgrade the steel relatively easily in a knife like this. See, watch. We're going to take this, which we're going to assume is going to be in some sort of a surgical stainless sort of thing. Um, and we're going to go on ahead and we're going to upgrade the steel here. We're going to go ahead and just do this. And here we go. Maxim. And we are now... Top of the line steel right now. Maximet steel. Absolutely wonderful. Um, we now have a brand new Maximet steel sort of knife right here. We have 60 years of innovation. What the fuck is that? I don't think the Buck 110 is 60 years old. Now, okay, but we, we gotta we gotta let them know here. I mean, Maxam, this is a brand new sort of thing. I'm sorry, Maximet. Um <laughs> now we can sell this on eBay for twice the price. Um, anyways. So the Maximet here is uh 60 years of innovation. Um, design and art on this package are protected by U.S. copyright law, may not be duplicated, published for any other uses, not permitted to duplicate or alter any trademarks. Whoops. On this package. Um, limited lifetime warranty. Okay. This knife is not designed for pounding or prying. Strong impacts and twisting forces may damage the knife, may result in the blade folding or otherwise failing during use. On lock blade models, it always check to assure the lock mechanism. Okay, hold on. Back up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. On lock blade models, let's make sure you can read this. Always check to assure the locking mechanism is operational prior to use. On locking blade models, I repeat, Always check to make sure that the locking mechanism is operational prior to use. Let's back up for a second here. What is the one damn thing that a locking pocket knife should do? Well, lock. That's kind of the part of the definition there. And I, so I feel vaguely like uh, checking to make sure that the locking mechanism is operational prior to use is sort of their damn job. I don't know. Maybe I'm old-fashioned here. Maybe I'm completely off base. But I really do feel like that's sort of outsourcing something that maybe shouldn't have been outsourced to me. But nevertheless, we will make sure to check to see if the locking mechanism is operational prior to use. So let's go on ahead and see what Maxim has given them for us in this wonderful, wonderful piece. And I bet it will no doubt be a piece for sure. Okay, hold on. You know, to start with, just a second here. Um, design in this art are pack protected by U.S. copyright law may not be published to you, so they're very intellectual property sensitive. That's good. Anyways, I digress. Um, so, sorry, you can tell which one I wanted to talk about, right? Um, okay, so then I'm loving very much the fact that we've got random dust or something on here. Um, that's, that's excellent. We have, is this another one where the pivot is actually the clip screw? Yes, it appears to be. Okay. Now let's, okay. Max M. There we go. Oh, R is the steel. He, yeah, he's right. It's R. Um, absolutely 100%. Or maybe Max M R. I don't know. Either way, they have maximized the lulls in this whole affair right here. Why is there baking soda in the pivot? I don't know. It must have been Friday night at the factory, you know? Um, but we can see here it is manufactured in China, national, headquarters USA. Or maybe it's manufactured in China with the national headquarters in the USA, which is kind of, it feels a little weird. Like, doesn't every company have national headquarters in someplace else, right? Um, Max M is the budget step down from Bird. I guess so. Ay, 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 ay. What was that? That's sketchy sounding. Is that a backlock with lockstick? Uh, centering is, uh, LOL. That's, that's nice. Um, the, yeah. Ergonomically speaking, no. Actually, just, just, no. I like how we've got the, the fake FRN pattern. Well, it's a real pattern. It's not like, this is actually a pattern right here. We can do the washboard style thing. Frankly, it's the most useful part of this damn thing. But it's only present on the one side because that would cost a little bit of extra money. 
Can we get a live disassembly? Hawkwit, screw you so very, very much. Okay. Um, let's see if we can pull that off. Uh, but then first we got to get, get deep into this. Um, in terms of blade play, there is... I'm trying to decide if this is blade play or just like the lock bar moving inside there. Either way, it ain't great. Vertical blade play, yep, absolutely 100%. Um, is that a half stop? That is 100% a half stop. They've gone ahead and they put a half stop on a back lock. That's, I guess, innovation. Uh, no sharpening choil, and I'm, I'm definitely digging the fact that they didn't even try to sharpen all the way up to the edge there. That's that's cool. Just like, yeah, close enough. That works. Um, let's see if it's sharp. Whoa. Whoa. Is this sharp? Oh my God, it's sharp. That's new. What the heck? Okay. That's absolutely something. Okay. All right. So we have ourselves a, an actual sharp pocket knife here. That's 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 a thing. Um, this is the upgraded Dalika. Oh my God. Um, one thing to highlight, by the way, is that if you think of like, oh, Nick, it's not all that similar. Look at the last generation of this particular Spydeco Delica. And you'll see that it is perhaps even a little bit... Uh, no, 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 no. Magic Fox, I did not say decent knife. It, it, that, 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 those words at no point left my mouth. But yeah, this is, this is a thing. So we have a Maxam right here. Is this going to cause me cancer in California? Uh, maybe not. No, it doesn't look like it. That's good, at least. Um, with Lamar. Lamar. What the heck is Lamar? Like, I know what a Lamar is, but I don't know what Lamar is. Isn't that like a soccer player? Like, I feel like somebody out there is like, oh, yeah, I'm cheering for Lamar. He's the very best goalie. Sorry, I don't know soccer. That's football for the rest of the damn world. Anyways, I... I, I, I Okay, so we have right here our Maximet Lamar uh, 60 years. By the way, 60 years of innovation. When did the Delica come out? Just just checking, just saying there for sure. Um, oh, my God. Great stuff. Yes, indeed. This is a thing. This is absolutely 100%. The asbestos in the pivot area. Yeah, oh, God. Oh, man. <laughs> Neymar. Neymar is the soccer player. Okay, I'm sorry. Lamar, Lamar is just his patented uh, polymer handle material. So I, I have to thank very much my buddy Keith, for uh, who has resulted in, no, that the dragonfly isn't from him, although he's a nice guy. Uh, he tends to send me terrible knives, which I very much appreciate. But we have, so far just today, we have had such a cavalcade of crap. Um, we have had the, the, the Maximet uh, Dalika over here. We've got the, 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 um, uh, police tech, which is an absolute, oh God, they put the quotes, guys. That's amazing. We have ourselves the very first blade guard clip pivot securing pocket knife right there. That's amazing. We have ourselves whatever the hell this thing is. Like, I kind of feel like, I'm trying to, th I'm still thinking like legally speaking, and this does not constitute legal advice in any way, shape or form, but imagine if you took this out in front of a police officer, like, do you think they would actually stop laughing in time for them to actually charge you with this? Like, I'm, I don't want to find out. I'm not planning to, but I, I genuinely feel like if, if this were something that was discovered in like my, my backpack or something, I don't think anyone would take me seriously enough to charge me. This is not legal advice, by the way. This does not, but I, I really genuinely feel like they'd just sort of maybe institutionalize me or something like that. And that would be a different thing. Oh, the Lamar here. Um, and then the, uh, oh, the what? <laughs> that's right with the partial assist like uh, it's the assist in the sense of all help sure um which is just beautiful with the scorpion and everything and then finally of course we have the um the hell's ergos uh we'll just put it that way oh god this is you should carry that for a week no no like there is Ah, I wanted to say there is no amount of money you could combine to give the charity that would make me carry this for a week, but there probably is, but you're not going to get there. Because it's going to be like six figures or something like that. Look, 
Okay. If you guys can raise six figures, and I mean figures on the on, on the, the left side of the decimal point, thank you very much, for your local domestic violence shelter or for a national cause, I will carry this knife for a week. In fact, I will fly someplace where it is legal to carry this knife for a week. I will be there for a week such that I can carry this for a week. Where would this be legal? Where would I... Probably Arizona. Let's be real here. I... I... If you can raise six figures for domestic violence, I will do it. But please, do, but don't, but do, but don't. Uh, what did I do? Why did you say that? Uh, Arkansas, yeah, I guess. But like, really? Uh, no, no, not six, not six thousand dollars, like six figures. That's greater than one hundred thousand U.S. dollars. No, no Zimbabwean stuff, okay? Come back to Michigan, perfectly legal here, but it's not in good taste anywhere. That's the problem. Spidey flick the Dalika. Oh, God, that action. Like, it's it's trying not to open. It's like, dude, you're making a bad choice at every stage of the opening process. It's just... Oh, God, is this thing... Keith, you have outdone yourself here. This is absolutely spectacular. Now, one thing that I want to uh, jump onto, thank you. <laughs> Fly to Georgia. I'm not sure if it's legal here, but if you're arrested, I'll make sure you're not charged for it. <laughs> See, sometimes it is good to give legal advice to strangers on the internet. Oh, God. Um... Why would it be illegal? This right here. I, I don't, you know, generally, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a fan of knife laws. I think most of the time they're just used to shake down people who have, you know, uh, who are otherwise uh, economically and socially disadvantaged. But I feel like this should probably be illegal, right? Uh, just from a pure, like, taste standpoint. Like, I feel like this should be illegal in the same sense that probably, like, yelling at a puppy should be illegal. Not because it's like breaking a law, but because, no, don't do this. But this should be like illegal not to carry, but to like make, to, 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 to have be a thing. Like, I'm not a big fan of thought crime, but I, I honestly, I'd be okay with this one being criminalized, you know? Um, oh my God. So anyways, now that I'm advocating for knife laws, um, there, there, there were many things that I have done on the channel before. And in fact, Keith, um, my good buddy Keith, is is a well-known troll for my channel um, in that he is very, very regularly, um, well, he has regularly made a, a cavalcade of crap arrive on my table, which is a wonderful thing, of course. Um, however, um, he's not the only person regularly trolling me. And one of the, the, the other people who is very regularly trolling me and who I haven't actually seen in the chat today, but likely he's off, you know, being a, the, the, the responsible, you know, family person or something like that, is my buddy Chris, who said to me, Nick, hey, I, 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 I have something for you. You review a lot of watches, and I do indeed. The moment I'm wearing this Casio, which I freaking love, absolutely spectacular freaking knife. It says, Nick, you review a lot of watches. And, you know, you, you talk a lot about the difference between... A, Pardon me, custom. Sorry. Grenade life looks like a fat penguin. Is a comment from Mr. Airgun. Oh my God, it does. See, there's his little eye, his little beak, but he's like a, 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 a punk goth penguin or a punk penguin with a big, like one of those septum piercings hanging down there. Ah, uh, that's... Yeah, nice. That's that's on point. I appreciate that very much, Mr. Airgun. But anyways, he said, Nick, you've reviewed a lot of watches, but all the watches that you've reviewed are, are production watches. Indeed, that is the case. I have never reviewed a non-production watch. Everything that I do, I don't have the, the, the I don't have the, the money, the cash, the time, the wherewithal to jump into a um, uh, to jump into the custom watch world, which is you know very often in the you know tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, this is indeed the buck rapid fire, Chris. This is, that is that Chris. And so he said, Nick, I think it's about time that you look at a custom wristwatch. And I, of course, was very excited. I'm thinking like, oh, who's this going to be? Is this going to be like Voodoo Is this going to be R.W. Smith? I mean, what, what, what are we looking at here? And then a package arrived for me. Um, and inside that package was my very, very first custom wristwatch. 
right here. That's right. <laughs> Jackass, who is a wonderful human being, uh, went online and customized a, a, a Nick Shabazz custom wristwatch. Um, it is um, it is a thing. It is a Zazzle, by the way. Zazzle is the, um, that, that is our brand here, where we are zazzling indeed. It's Japan movement, water resistant to three atmospheres. Because if there's one thing that I like in a wristwatch, it's inadequate water resistance. It is, of course, assembled in China with a stainless steel case back. But nevertheless, what we have here is a custom wristwatch um, because it has my channel logo right in the middle. It has a beautiful rainbow. He, I think he mentioned that he wanted to emulate the rainbow bezel of the Casio. Maybe I'm, I'm making that up. I, I don't know. But either way, it was a good idea there. Um, and that was a... Uh, that was a beautiful thing. He actually let me know that he attempted to have it made such that the, the logo and everything was off-center, but they corrected it in production. Um, so he, part of his trolling actually failed. And I'm sort of sad that it did, because I feel like that would have really thrown a little bit of, um, oh, shall we say, gas on the fire, so to speak. But I, I, I am a big fan of some of my trolls. Um, th th there are many trolls that I'm very, very fond of, and this one indeed... This is another beautiful example of that. So I now have myself a brand new dress watch, the Nick Shabazz custom wrist watch, my very first custom watch, and absolutely 100% a beautiful thing. Oh, baby. So we have ourselves a custom wrist watch here. And I think actually for this point in the evening, that's going to conclude our Terrible Gear live portion. I think now it's time for me to open it up a little bit, to uh, uh, jump this into a uh, <laughs> best troll yet, Nick, enjoy it. And the thing is, look, at some level I've worn it, like not to anything of any, you know, I, I'm trying to picture a, lo a location where this would be a good idea to wear it, but by God, I, I, I have worn it around the house and whatnot. Oh, and by the way, take a look at the hands here. You may be thinking to yourself, Nick, it's loomed. That's amazing. Uh, where is that flashlight? Let's go on ahead and charge this up with a high-powered flashlight. It is actually loomed. None of the markers are loomed, and that's going to fade off within, oh, maybe 15 seconds or so. But it is absolutely a beautiful thing, and indeed it does pair well, Hawkwit, with the Nick Chavez Victorinox pocket, or, uh, pocket knife here. So, yeah, see? Uh, there you go. We're right on there. That is, a, um, that is a beautiful thing. Oh, wait a second. Oh, Nathan. Uh, were you involved in the heat wave? Was that you? I just noticed these guys sitting up in the corner there. I, I'm feeling like that. It's a one jewel movement. <laughs> it's certainly a one gem movement. That's for damn sure. Um, oh, that's a beautiful thing. Um, uh, so what we've got right here is this uh, this little guy right here. This is the Nick Shabazz Victorinox Classic. Um, uh, the, these sold out within eight hours, which, I mean, holy crap, guys, by the way. Holy crap. Um, but we are working. I, I've talked with the Blade HQ. We are ordering another batch of these in. I don't know exactly what the timing's looking like as they're coming from, well, presumably Switzerland. Um, but nevertheless, uh, I will let you all know when they come back available, and we will keep making batch of them until that's a uh, problem or until that's a problem well until it is a problem let's be real here but um at the very least we're going to keep making these guys until you all get some so that is an absolutely wonderful thing um yeah anyways um i did just notice actually three more that i'd put out on the table i have my pile of discarded maximet boxes and whatnot on the table here but i realized that i actually have three more knives that i wasn't thinking about that are going to be just terrible um, the police and EMT knives to go with the firefighters. Uh, oh, yes, 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 indeed. Uh, we have, where are those? That's not him. No, that's a whole different affair. Yes, we do have three other wonderful pocket knives, um, two of which I believe are from my, um, my buddy Nathan here. Um, what we have right here is this little guy. Now, this guy actually I have shown on the channel before, but I showed it. Is this not going to open? This is the worst tent I've ever used. This is absolutely amazing. I have not... Wow. It's impressive that the tent is this... Oh, it's just the action is this bad. That's absolutely amazing. Ay, ay, ay. Um, these knives, thank you very much for the donation. They're these. Um, but this... God, this action is so bad. Like, if you... Ah, is there enough wrist? Yeah, you can get enough wrist there. We have ourselves a firefighter knife, which is absolutely gorgeous here. 
Uh, and this is one that actually showed up on my table last, uh, some time back, and now I actually have one for the channel, which is a beautiful thing. We have the Homeland Heroes number two, by the way. This is not Homeland Heroes number one. This is Homeland Heroes number two, or perhaps those are two tie letters that I don't understand. That That's a possibility as well. Not a, not 100% sure which. But nevertheless, we have Homeland Heroes number two, which I'm assuming is in the same sequence as the, uh, the, the, the firefighter knife. Wait, what? What is that sound even? Oh, the blade is just so loose in there that it's... Holy crap, look at the blade play on this. Like, seriously, I'm going to hold this still. That's an amazing amount of blade play there. Um, so this is an emergency service knife, which means if you try and use this knife, you will probably end up dealing with the emergency services. Does it lock up? Oh, God, that's bad. That's... Oh, man. Yeah. I would... This does need emergency service, that's for sure. Um, so one question that was just asked is, can you loosen the screw on the firefighter knife? Um, that's a really good question. Let's see. Uh, maybe I can tighten this guy up and see where we end up. Okay. Well, um, I was in fact able to remove... Oh, no, wait, there's still major blade play. And now the knife doesn't lock up. So I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to count that as a no. What if I were to completely crank this down? Would it lock up then? No. Okay, we have two choices here. We have... Ah, no, there's still significant blade. Oh, no, wait. That's just the whole knife bending. Check this out. Nice. Like, I thought that this plastic piece right here was just for decoration, but this is structural. Like, this is the only thing keeping this thing from collapsing at any given moment. That's That's pretty impressive right there. So, um, th th that didn't help particularly. And then let's see, can we, uh, can we loosen the pivot on this guy to make this a little bit better? <laughs> Hendrix flips. I thought blade tap was only a ballast song issue. Ah, uh, okay. There I was, holy blade play, Batman. That ain't doing it. Although actually it's dead set it. That's weird. So, it does lock up. There's a lot of blade play, but it is dead center. Um, that is absolutely spectacular. And actually, hold on. Hold on. I have an absolutely wonderful letter here. Um, right here from Nathan, who just reminded me that there is a letter. I, I will uh, allow me to, uh, to, 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 to share. And actually, we'll, we'll look at the third one before we go deeper into that. Um, so we have ourselves, this guy, which now has an uh, it's not an actually an action. It's a thing, though. <laughs> I like how in the pocket clip it's just like China. Just China. China. Nice. Um, and then finally we have to take a look at the, uh, the, the heat wave over here. Um, let's go on ahead and... Uh, why is this so bad? Like, there's something that feels very badly wrong here. And I don't know what it is. But it's something all right. This, why, why is this, why does this feel wrong? So it's super lightweight. That's nice. Like half of this is just plastic, but again, so is the pair of three lightweight. That's not necessary. Have you ever had that feeling like something's just wrong? Like what, what's the, you know, like the superstition, like somebody just walked over your grave or something like that. Or, uh, you know, it's like a, it's. Well, you're not sure what's going on here, but there's, it, it's like in, the, in the, the, the movies, like it's quiet, too quiet. That's the feeling I'm getting handling this knife, and I don't quite understand why. Something feels very, very badly wrong here, and I can't quite put my finger on what that thing is. Like, maybe it's possessed. Maybe this is evil. Maybe it's going to cause me cancer because I live in California. I don't know exactly what's going on here, but something feels bad. The molded plastic scale is the standoffs. That's not enough itself, but I just, I, I feel so, something's off here. Are those Torx or Phillips head that's been stripped out? That's Phillips head that's been stripped out. Okay, that's nice. What's wrong? Why, why, why do I feel so, is there no detent?
there's a little tiny bit of detent, but wait, is this a front flipper? No, okay. It, 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 it's just, I, I, this knife feels haunted. I, and I'm not a superstitious man, people. I just, there's something wrong here. There's something, holy crap. Like, as I'm doing this, the, 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 the lockup is just getting more and more. It's like it's just creeping its way over, and now the lockup's at, like, roughly 105% because it's kind of hanging out the other side. Like, I, I, something's bad wrong. I don't know. I really don't know, but I'm scared of it. We're just going to put it that way. I, it, it, something's off there. The ghost of terrible knives passed in. <laughs> I support this. Um. Oh, man. So we have these three wonderful pocket knives here, and i got to read my buddy Nathan's story. These terrible knives are follow-ups to the Red EMS knife I sent you a while ago. I paid for these new in a store, his quotes, I found while driving around rural Georgia one day. I think I paid for all three with a $10 bill and got some change back. The truly terrible thing is that the guy who sold them to me used to be in law enforcement and said he gave and sold a bunch of these to some friends who are still active and who still carry them and think they're great. Nick, police officers who could potentially be called upon to save my life his emphasis, are carrying this and don't know what they're missing. Even worse than that, he told me once that one of them accidentally pulled the trigger while unholstering his pistol and the, the knife in his pocket saved his leg from being shot off. Now they're all going to think these are good knives and they might buy more. Holy crap. Nathan, this reveals a, a fundamentally demonic knife. <laughs> good point there. You. This reveals a fundamental element by which knives like this can be demonic. Um, and not necessarily in the in the, the, the their affiliation with any dark princes. They, you know, they, they, there's that always as a possibility. But no, I, the the real demonic part about some of these terrible knives is that people don't know better. That there are people out there in the world who genuinely have never left the gas station. Well, they've left the gas station presumably, unless they live a really weird life. But nevertheless, they they they, they never looked outside of the gas station knife community, and they've never realized that you can pay. Sure, this is like under ten bucks, but if if you're willing to go up to like 25 bucks, you can actually get some remarkably decent knives. This is not a full review, but I've got this little guy on the table right here. This is a QSP Parrot. It's like a $20, $20 knife. And you know what? It is pretty damn good. For the price, it's okay. It, it does absolutely fine. For 35 bucks, the world is your freaking oyster. You're in Rat 1, Rat 2 territory. You can get your, uh, yourself the, um, the, 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 the CJRB, uh, the, the, not our chaos, Centros. You can get yourself so many amazing freaking knives for 25 bucks these days. The, 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 the fact that there were people out there who were counting on a piece of, well, distilled evil, frankly, to, 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 to potentially save their lives, that's a, um, that's kind of a problem. And that's part of the reason I do this channel. That's one of the things that I'm thankful for. I've had a bunch of people message me and say, Nick, I got to be honest, when I started off, I was carrying some of the stuff you might feature in a Terrible Knives Live thing, but I found gear that was not much more expensive and that is so much more better. And that's such a wonderful thing. That is the biggest thing that brings me joy, is when people can find something that works beautifully in their lives and is an absolutely wonderful thing um, and is still not that expensive and still will keep them much, much safer and much, much happier than they would have otherwise been. So if I can prevent one person from carrying something terrible like this or perhaps even more so like this, out in the world, um, then by God, I, I've got something I can be thankful for because that was a beautiful thing. Keith, thank you very much for the donation of cash as well as the donation of the Terribility. Nathan, thank you very much for finding these and more importantly, for getting these off the streets. I will make sure that these are disposed of in a way that is... I, you know, the thing is, I, there aren't any active volcanoes that I can cast these into, so I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do, but... This one particularly, I think I'm going to need like an old priest and a young priest. I, I, I don't know exactly how I'm going to deal with this, but I'm going to be dealing with it for years to come, probably in my sleep for a good long time. So um, that is an absolutely wonderful thing, and uh, that is the reason why I do these terrible knives live sorts of things. Not because I want to make fun of these knives, although by God, some of them do deserve it. Just saying. Uh, however... 
Um, I'm doing it such that, you know, hopefully I can prevent somebody from making a purchasing decision or a carrying decision, even worse, that might actually legitimately hurt them someday. So absolutely 100%. Thank you to everybody who's donated some absolutely terrible crap today. And um, I was about to qualify because this is pretty innovative. Let's be real here. Um, even though he's giving me cancer, which to be fair is... Anyways, I digress. Um, and I very much appreciate everybody who's chosen to share these things with me, which is an absolutely beautiful freaking thing. So now, we have covered the terrible gear. We have covered the awfulness. We've covered the terribility of the world quite nicely. And I think it's time that we end on a, uh, on a slightly nicer note. Um, and so we're going to go on ahead and we're going to open it up. Um, as you think about your questions, I want to show off some of the stuff that's just come onto my table recently that I'm actually looking forward to talking about and doing a review of that is decidedly not terrible. Everything from this point forward, actually the Z Hunter may appear in the freaking... The cursed knife is still staring at me. Um, nevertheless, the... Uh, <laughs> why, what is wrong with this thing? Why am I so... Like, did this knife kill me in a past life or something? It can't be that old. Like, I... I... There's something going on there. Anyways, I'd like to show off some of the stuff that's coming up on the table here, um... That, 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 that will be a beautiful thing. Um, Dan's Gear Addiction actually asked about a knife that I'm going to be showing off uh, very, very shortly on the channel. That's this little guy right here. This is the Giant Mouse Ace Sonoma. Um, this is in many ways ways, sort of a reimagining of the Giant Mouse GM3, but from a better factory and with some fixes to the designs. And it is an absolute, is it a Horcrux? Sorry, Magic Fox just asked if this is a Horcrux. For the Harry Potter nerds out there, um, the, the, yeah, maybe, but it's, hopefully it ain't mine. But if there is some Lord of Evil who's part of his soul is or her soul, for that matter, I mean, evil comes in both genders. Um, the, the, this, oh my god, this could it probably there's evil in here someplace. I don't know. Anyways, um, there's going to be a review of this guy coming up maybe even tomorrow. Actually, here, we're going to put it this way. So uh, this is the Ace Sonoma right here, Giant Mouse Ace Sonoma. It's a very interesting knife. And in fact, they're doing a big sale on it. If I get evidence of a $5 donation or a greater than $5 donation, let's put it this way, to, somebody, to a local domestic violence shelter in your area during the course of this podcast, Broadcast, or a broadcast that is, I will 100% uh, air the review of this guy, heck, immediately after this, this live thing. That way you get one more Nick Shabazz video and somebody in need gets a little bit of help to get them back on their feet. So if you can give me a $5 or more donation to your local domestic violence shelter, just email the receipt to charity at nickshabazz.com, then I will 100% air this as soon as I am done with the live stream. So there you go. Put your money where your mouth is, and otherwise, I'll put it up in the next couple of days or something like that. But I think it's a good thing for us to do some good right here. But anyway, so there's the Ace Sonoma. Absolutely 100%. That one's going to be coming up. Um, Chaburkov's Small Strish is absolutely going to be reviewed here, along with the large one. This is a knife that I actually like a lot more than I expected to. My buddy Chris, who is actually the same Chris who has been repeatedly trolling me throughout the history of my channel, um, actually showed me at the, uh, at, at the gathering uh, a, a version of this knife, and it was like, whoa. That's surprisingly good. Um, and it is indeed surprisingly good. This is sort of a Russian Sebenza with a whole bunch of good stuff going for it. And so I'm definitely going to be taking a look at this guy here shortly. I haven't filmed this one yet, but it's definitely coming. A couple of other really cool things that are coming up here. The um, Quiet Carry Drift. I, I have really no idea when this guy is actually being released. It's a little bit opaque, but there's a lot to love about it. It's a Van Axe blade. It is, the, the, the only downside with it is that the detent is a little bit weak. It, it needs a slightly kind of poppier detent, I think, because it really doesn't thumb open all that well. You can do it, but it's not amazing. But ergonomically speaking, it's on point. The blade stock is super thin. It cuts beautifully. Can I forward this Dan's gear addiction? Oh, to the shelter? Um, sure. Why the heck not? I can do that. We'll count that. Alrighty, yeah, I'll, I'll drop the quiet carry, but feel free to keep making donations, by the way. In fact, if we can raise more money, it's Thanksgiving. Show some of your thankfulness for the life by helping some other folks out there. If you want to do that, that'll be an absolutely wonderful thing. And actually, okay, here we go. If you all can raise 200 bucks for domestic violence shelters locally during the course of today's broadcast, I will trigger an immediate Shabazzapalooza. Go ahead and just post. A, I, I just sent you a thing. Uh, and if I can do that, that will trigger a Shabazzapalooza. You will get a new video every day for the next week. That's 100%. Give me 200 bucks to domestic violence shelters in your area, and I will 
new video every damn day this week. So make it happen, people. Uh, by the end of this pod, or uh, the end of this broadcast, you got some time here, but still, um, it is absolutely one hundred percent a thing. Um, we've got the quiet carry drift. That's going to be a joy here. We have a. Um, we have the quiet, uh, not quiet carry at all. This is the Monterey Bay Knives, uh, the McGinnis uh, designed sprocket. Um, and I actually have both versions on the table here on loan from Monterey Bay Knives themselves, um, which is a really interesting piece. I'm not generally a big McGinnis design person um, and the recurve and whatnot, but you know what? I, I think it's nicely made at the very least. And so uh, keep an eye out for the review of that guy. Um, coming up here soon, I have the Spydeco Emphasis or emphasis, depending on where you want to put the emphasis. Um, very interesting little piece here. I've got the QSP Parrot I was just showing off. i got the Tuya Knives Envy. That's right. I'm definitely going to be giving a review of this to you. Uh, uh, okay, I tried. Um, there we go. Um, here we have the um, Spydeco. Uh, this is the UKPK, actually, an S110V. Um, this was actually, I don't know if hockey is still in here, but um, th th this has a long and circuitous route back to my table, but I had a review of the, uh, the the UK PK a while ago. I wanted to give it a second look, and then at the end of this, this guy will go up for a charitable giveaway thing. Um, we have here the QSP Kylan, which was donated to me by a wonderful viewer who is... Um, has a sense of humor, 100%. Um, this is this is a pocket knife right here. Like, I'm honestly not 100% sure which part of the broadcast this should have gone into, but it is absolutely beautifully made, uh, no matter what. Uh, no matter its heritage, no matter its um, design style, it 100% is a beautiful thing, uh, at least in its construction. In its construction. Um, and then actually one of the piece that's come onto my table is this little guy. This is the CRKT Slacker. Um, the, the, this is a uh, 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 quick field strip technology knife where you can take it apart instantly uh, using the, uh, the the wheel in the back here. And just like the uh, home front, which is this little guy right here. Except this is a much more compact version. And perhaps a pretty decent knife for uh, everyday carry. And it is actually designed by Ken Onion. Um, uh, I believe so, yeah, right on the back here. Ken Onion Slack. Um, very, very interesting piece. So keep an eye out for this guy coming up here soon. So um, there we go. Um, oh, man. Homeland Heroes, by the way. Did I not point that out? Homeland Heroes. That's kind of excellent. With the big American flag. I'm kind of loving the big American flag with the Made in China thing everywhere. That's... Ah, that just adds, it sweetens the pot, right? I mean, and the, it is indeed already so, so very, very sweet. So, um, what questions do you all have? I'm going to try and answer as many questions as I can here before my uh, throat falls off, so to speak. But, um, you know, just drop them in the chat there. Uh, super chats I will try to get to absolutely 100%, but everybody's questions I'll try to get to. I got all my gear right here. I'm happy to jump in, throw any, uh, answer any questions you got. And I do want to keep this going just a little bit longer because I would sure love to make that $200 goal and uh, get ourselves some absolutely wonderful... Um, well, get some great support to people who need it most, especially around this time of the year. Um, so let's see here. Oh, Michael uh, Galovich. Uh, Golovich? Not quite sure how your name goes there, Michael. Uh, Michal, I don't know. Um, as new Sandrine slipper, uh, Slippy, that is, also coming up. Yes, indeed. This right here is the Sandrine... Uh, oh, God, what the heck's the name of this thing? Uh, it is the Sandrine TCK, I want to say. Uh, one of those guys. This has a, it is a tungsten carbide knife. That is its big deal here. This is a very specific blend of tungsten carbide, uh, which holds an edge for freaking ever. If you check out Pete over at Cedric and Ada Gear and Outdoors, he did a cut test using, uh, a knife, the previous generation of this, and it is absolutely amazing. Um, in terms of its cutting performance, it's not a great knife for prying, it's not a great, but this is a new version of the, the original one I have around from a stealth review this little guy. The original one was a knife that had a very, very nice blade, but unfortunately just wasn't all that great as a pocket knife. In this case, they have actually fixed a lot of the issues that made it a subpar knife, and it is a very, very interesting piece now. Um, it's got an absolutely astounding blade to it, and uh, that's something you want to keep in mind there. Um, let's see here. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, what do you think about people who ignore any knife that's not done in M390 steel? Now, M390 steel is an absolutely great steel. Um, there, there, there is absolutely no doubt about that. This is, I believe, yeah, is M390 right here. Bed you slip joint flipper, or uh, I'm sorry, flipper trapper, front flipper trapper, whatever it is. 
Um, M390 is an absolutely great steel. It may not be as good as, for instance, Maximet. Sorry, couldn't resist. Um, but, but it is an absolutely wonderful steel. Right now, however, um, thank you very, very much there, Yuna. I appreciate that. Um, the, uh, what was I saying? The M390 is an absolutely wonderful thing. Um, but the problem is there's more to life than chemistry. And this is something that I think a lot of people in the, um, a lot of people in the community are, uh, sort of coming to terms with right now. Because there has been a spate of makers who have used high-end chemistry steels, uh, and then uh, skipped money on the heat treat. Or more, p p perhaps more reliably, just weren't checking the heat treat well enough. And so there are these two competing camps in the, in the everyday carry knife world right now. On the one side of the people, here's another knife in M M390. This is the Herman Knives Sting in M390. Anyways, there are two. There are these kind of two competing camps going on right now. Um, the uh, biggest camp is sort of the, oh, it has to be M390. That's the only way. And by the way, M390 is like chemically equivalent to 20 CV, which is, uh, tell me a 20 CV, uh, right here. Um, it is pretty much chemically equivalent to a 20 CV and CTS 204P. They're basically the same thing. But, um, so there are the people like, oh, it has to be that. And that's kind of a stupid approach because honestly, there are a lot of great knives that are made with steels that are, you know, a different steel. In fact, for a lot of people, there are steels that they like even more. You know, I like M4 a lot, for instance. I think it's an absolutely great steel. It has its specific purposes, but, you know, th th there's a lot of joy on both sides. But there are also the people who've been looking at that, the, the, the whole world basically of, uh, you know, oh my God, there were a couple of knives that didn't pass, you know, pass muster at oddness, and so now all M390 is bad. And I think that's also a really dumb approach. I think what you have to do is find companies that are actually doing good work, um, who are, you know, heat treating their blades well, but who are also doing a good job at making edges that cut things, and, you know, edge geometry is going to be a big factor here, too. So, I think M390 is an absolutely great steel. That whole family, absolutely spectacular. And if, some, if a maker says to me, hey, Nick, I'm using M390, it's like, great, have fun. But at the same time, it, it's just as silly to say it has to be M390 as to say M390 is a bad steel because a couple of people did it wrong. There's a truth in the middle there someplace. It's a really nice thing. I love seeing it. However, there are lots of really nice steels out there and that's a beautiful thing. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, and Tommy D, I very, very much appreciate uh, the donation. It says, happy Thanksgiving to you and my funny spouse. <laughs> is she funny just because she's married to me? Because, well, actually, that is kind of funny, right? Uh, what the heck is she thinking? Anyways, asks me, um, <laughs> would you briefly, if possible, go over my sharpening technique for the Grimsmo Norseman? I can. Um, so here's the deal. I'm not the best person to talk about sharpening with because, honestly, there's a lot of detail there. But when I've done this in the past using the KME system, which is a clamped system, the way that I've actually done this is to use two different passes, basically. To start, I clamp it in like this, and I then just go ahead and I do the normal thing where, you know, you chop and chop and chop and flip, chop and chop and flip. And then on the other side, you clamp it in like this, and then you chop in the front part of it. And you do that in a completely independent pass. And you try to make sure that you're not going as you're doing the front part, you're not rounding around, because that'll round off this corner. And then similarly, you make sure that you're not going over there. This is, I think, the best approach for it if you're using a, a, a system like that. If I was freehanding, that's actually a lot more difficult because of this recurve here. Freehand stones and recurves don't tend to go super well together. But nevertheless, that's sort of the approach I would take if I were going to be sharpening the Norseman right now. Um, and so that's a nice thing. The other thing to remember though is that with a knife like this very often you can get away and especially rwl 34 is the steel that they're using on most of the norsemen if it's not a damascus steel model um but one of the nice parts about rwl 34 is that it strops up so very very nicely and so it's so very easy to actually do a um uh, to, 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 to do a um, to, to, to get this guy back to a wonderful edge, even without doing a full sharpen on it. And so, if you just have a strop, and particularly like a, a flexible strop, this guy can clean up so very nicely without really doing ever touching it with a stone, which is an absolutely beautiful thing. Um, Adam says, uh, "Thank you very happy Thanksgiving to our American cousins. Thank you very much. They're donating nine pounds. Ah, okay, someplace probably over in the UK." And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I appreciate that very much there, Adam. Um, asks, uh, Adam asks, do you get many Tissot watches in America? I picked up a visit date on a Milanese band a few months back. It is a great watch for under 300 bucks. Tissot, T-I-S-S-O-T, -S uh, is actually a very nice brand. They do a lot of really good work, and that's a, a beautiful thing. Um, so I, I appreciate that. Um, but Tissot does some really cool stuff. Uh, what do they have? They had the T-Touch, which was a weird, like, touch interface 
Quartz wristwatch I almost reviewed some time back. Um, I believe they're also members of the Swatch Group, so you're getting pretty solid. If you find a Tissot that you love, then do it. You, you gotta love it. It's a freaking nice knife. Or a uh, knife. I mean, if you find the Tissot knife, it's probably gonna be a nice knife, but you're probably getting a watch from them. Let's be real here. So that's something to consider. Actually, one thing before I get to Hockey's message. Thank you, Hockey. Um, speaking of Grimsmo Norseman, there's actually something else kind of exciting that's going on here soon. I don't have all the details quite narrowed down yet, but this is a Grimsmo knife right here. And in fact, this is the Grimsmo knife. This is my very original Grimsmo Norseman. It is still bearing an edge that I put on it with the KME, a beautiful KME mirror edge, whereas I haven't put a mirror edge on my new one yet because I honestly haven't used it in that all that much in the need to do that but this is the original Grimsmo Norseman that I purchased way back when this is one of the very last Grimsmo Norsemans that were made in their garage before they went up to the shop this is in some ways a piece of the channel's history and my uh, good buddy Sid is actually going to be doing a thing whereby he is uh he'll put it up on EDC bid uh and then the entire proceeds are going to go to charity um, and I believe he's doing uh, a uh, childhood cancer charity. So if you're in the market for a Grimsmo Norseman and you'd like one that's not only historically significant for the Grimsmos, being one of the very last ones that was made in their shop, um, but also that's significant in the history of the channel, you're going to have that option and it's going to be going to a wonderful cause. So that's going to be sort of the next big charitable thing that's going on here soon. And it can, you know, is an absolutely beautiful thing. So um, th 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 there you go. Um, Nicholas Wilson asked, Nick, would you sign and auction the Batman mask for charity? 100% yes. Um, uh, just let me know. I can order more of these. That's no problem. Uh, shipping's going to eat my face on it, but that's okay. Uh, I guess it's a mask. It's kind of supposed to eat your face, right? Um, Hawkwit asks, I can't afford to give too much. Oh, donates. I can't afford to give too much lately, but I'll always chip into someone I can call a friend as well as a creator I watch often. Happy Thanksgiving, Nick. Keep it up. Thank you very much for that, Hawkwit. Um, I very, very much appreciate that. Um, Rodrigo Theresa is wishing me a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you also very, very much for these blessings and happiness and whatnot. Um, have I checked out Jürgen Schanz yet? Um, I saw him in NYCKS, was super impressed. I do not know this person's name. Um, I appreciate that, though, and I'll keep an eye out for him on the, uh, the next year at the Blade Show. Hello there, Nick. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you. Oh, thank you for all the blessings here, guys. That's that's an absolutely wonderful thing. Um, Kukin, 1928. I know what's Kukin in that name. Uh... Okay, he asks, uh, how tall are you, Nick? Um, the answer to that is about 5'11", depending on what time of day it is. 5'11", 6 foot, if I'm wearing boots or something. But yeah, someplace in there. I'm going to drink some tea so that the, uh, the, 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 the old throat doesn't fall out here. Alrighty, um, any love for the Benchmade Mini Freak? As a matter of fact, if you watch my video of the Benchmade Freak, you will hear me, uh, uh, not rapping, but I guess r and being along to uh, Rick James Super Freak. So you can indeed watch that review. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Uh, let's see here. What else is there? Um, hey, Nick, try to pronounce the word Eichhorn Solingen, which is the name of a German knife manufacturer. Probably Eichhorn Solingen, I think, is the way I'm going to go for that. Probably screwed that up, but hopefully you found it interesting nonetheless. Um, let's see here. What else is a beautiful thing uh, that I need to be talking about? One of the things that's actually been bringing me some joy lately, oh, the donation challenge, JW, is I, I am going to need $200 donated directly to your local vi uh, domestic violence shelter, a total of 200 bucks during the course of today's podca or, uh, podcast, during the course of today's live session. And if that happens, I will trigger an immediate Shabazz Palooza, where you get a brand new video every day for the next week. Um, that will be an absolutely wonderful thing, and I hope it is a thing. When you finish the donation, just email it to charity at nickshabazz.com. Email your receipt, and that way I will figure it out. So, guys, come on. Uh, you get with the program here. I want those donations. I will stick around here. And actually, at this point, thank you all so much for the donations to me, but make it to your local shelter. I appreciate that, and that will just be a wonderful thing. Um, let's see here. Juice Baker asks, hey, Nick, thanks for all your amazing videos. You've inspired me a lot. Um, I will soon start my own gear and knife review channel. Any tips? That's really tough. Um, 
the biggest thing I, I would say for you as you're doing this is to go to a lot of shops, go to a lot of shows. If you if you are anywhere near like a Blade show or a Blade West, one of the best things you can do for yourself is go to a show where you can handle a bunch of stuff because it'll give you a sense of things. You know, people always talk about like, okay, Chris Reeve knives Sabenza. Oh, it's Sabenza smooth, but it's hard to know what that means if you've not handled one of these guys, right? Um, And so the more experience that you can get just handling a bunch of stuff will give you a better basis by which to review. If you are, if the only stuff that you have ever handled is cursed, then you, you, when something comes across your table that is not cursed, you're going to feel like, oh my God, I, I have no idea what to say then. Um, but yeah, so I, I would kind of go there. The other thing I'll say is I have my Behind the Gems video, which is sort of, it's a little bit outdated at this point, but it still captures the basics of it, which talks about my review setup. It talks about how I do this process and talks about all of this, and that might be of interest to you with uh, what's going on there. Um, so hopefully that'll be helpful. Um, <laughs> Um, Joe, uh, John Livedahl asks, uh, Nick, I hope you know you've ruined many knives I wanted to buy because of your Nick picks. Um, jokes aside, I value your opinion, learned a lot from you. Well, thank you, uh, John. I appreciate that. I encourage you not to learn too much from me because after all, I am just one random jackass, but if I can highlight something that would have been a deal breaker for you long before it arrives on your uh, table, that, 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 that's, to me at least, that still feels like a beautiful thing. And honestly, that's one of the reasons I started the channel, right? Because I'd buy something and be like, oh God, I wish somebody had told me about that. Um, and that would just be a wonderful thing. Um, let's see here. Uh, Michael Galovich asks, what is my go-to Pilot G2 pen refill? Honestly, lately, I've just been using the G2 refill in my, uh, come here, Machine Era Classic. Uh, righty. In the Machine Era Classic, lately, I've just been carrying the G2. Um, and the reason for that is that they're, they're cheap, they're easy, etc. And you know what? It's reliable. It works. Um, and so I've actually been pretty happy with that. I think the G2 refill is a great option. And, uh, you know, although there are lots of other things, you can do like a Mont Blanc cartridge in there or something. I've been pretty happy with the G2. So that's something to consider. Um, let's see here. Uh, Mr. Brown Sound. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, donates, thank you very much. Nick, I'm an a uh, avid Wicked Edge shop, and any interest in trying one of these guys out? Um, kind of, yeah. The Wicked Edge systems are very, very expensive. It's the biggest issue with them. And the other thing that bothers me a little bit um, is that... Usually when I'm doing shopping, lately I've actually been doing a lot of freehand shopping. I've been using like DMT stones, uh, ceramic stones to try and get, and I've been getting really nice edges off of them, by the way. Um, but the biggest issue that I have with the Wicked Edge is that when I'm shopping, I sort of want to be looking down on the blade. Um, and with the Wicked Edge, though, you are constantly holding, because it has a clamp that holds the blade up like this. And so the way that this works, actually, you know what? Just for safety's sake, I should be using a knife that isn't actually sharp. So let's go on ahead and, um, no, no, that one is sharp. Here we go. So this guy is being held up in place, and so you end up using basically these diamond uh, diamond paddles, if you will, to kind of go back and forth on the blade like this. And I feel like it's very feel-based, but I, I would kind of struggle a little bit, and I'd have to be constantly, you know, looking at it from the side, from the side, etc. That would be a little bit annoying to me. And so every time I've sat down to use one of them, for instance, at a trade show, I've just felt like, I don't know. And if it were super cheap, I, I'd be more interested in it. But uh, for me, you get, certainly get great results with them, but uh, I don't know. I'm not necessarily a big thing. Um, let's see here. Oh, God, we're getting a whole bunch of pronunciation questions here. Um, try a uh, uh, which I think means squirrel in German. Okay, uh, I just screwed that up. And now I'm getting a request to pronounce a Welsh place name. It should be Jan Fair Wilkin Gogory Schwern Drob Wiljan Ilio Gogogoch. Yeah, my Welsh is not great. I'm going to be honest with you here. So I'm sorry, entire Welsh-speaking population. I just butchered that. Uh, maybe Hawaiian. Hawaiian I can probably pull off. So yeah, um, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, thank you, Gamma Rayburst, for the kind question here. Um, will we get a Jackass Delight verse 2 at Christmas this year? Oh, good Lord. Um, that wasn't on the plans. Uh, maybe. We'll see. I don't know. I've been, but I've also been thinking maybe still Dre could. There's some. There's some joy there. Um, so that 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 that's something. 
But uh, yeah, uh, Spyderco Smock, should it go on my wish list? I think so. I think it remains a very, very nice knife. They're a little hard to get lately, but they are pretty damn good. Um, and especially if you start seeing things, I, I don't know, I keep hoping people are going to do like exclusives with them or something like that. That could definitely be an interesting thing. I, so it's a, it's a substantially nice knife. Uh, my own reservations about the whole smock situation aside, which is just that, you know, I, I personally had a bit of a negative experience. Um, I, it, it does good work, so you can't argue with that. Oh, good Lord. Now I've got Slovak coming at me here. Uh, okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, ch Chuchoriedka. Chuchoriedka, I think, is uh, blueberry and Slovak. Um, that's something. Um, yeah. Uh, Nick, did you ever consider this Omega Speedmaster when getting your Seamaster? Um, Seamaster, of course, being this little guy right here, uh, which is, hey, it's still on time. I was just wearing this the other day. Um, did you ever consider that? Uh, what drew me to the 300 over the Speedmaster? To start with, A, the Speedmaster is, in a lot of ways, a little bit behind the times. It's a manual wind watch, and that's something that, although I'm willing to put up with it for some things, just didn't do it for me. I don't need a chronograph, so there's a lot more complexity there. And, you know, it's, it's a watch with a lot of heritage, but honestly, things like the quick adjust clasp here, things like the overall aesthetic, just drew me to this guy. Um, I, this is a, a watch that I just think I like more. And so that's definitely a, a single, that's a nice thing. Um, oh, good Lord, Hungarian now. Um, so, yeah, uh, that, 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 that's a thing. Um, any Black Friday Nick must-haves? Um... The Giant Mouse Sonoma is really not bad. Um, and considering that we've, hopefully, we're making the, um, hopefully we're making donations here, that one that could go live tomorrow. Um, but other Black Friday must-haves. Honestly, the biggest thing I would recommend is kindness. Um, Black Friday has become this thing where it is sort of a, a, a retail holiday, but go be nice to somebody. I mean, sure, you go to a mall, go go stampede somebody. That's that's the American thing to do, I guess, right? But this is a nice time to remember that there are folks who are really thinking about things that are a little bit more, you know, I don't know, important. Or they're really having some trouble. Uh, you know, if you're walking by the mall and you see somebody who's really having a rough time holding a sign out there, give them some money. Or take the, Even better, take them out for freaking uh, lunch or something like that. I'm a, uh, I, I'm a big fan of, you know, sure, pick up some great stuff and, you know, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, all that stuff. But all also be kind. Maybe, I don't know, make some donations to a local DV shelter. Just throwing that one out there. But anyways, I, I think that's my biggest recommendation for Black Friday is don't buy whole hog into the consumerism thing. Remember the stuff that's really important in the world. Um, so they, oh, apparently I didn't screw up Slovak that bad. That's, hey, nice, I'll take it. Um, what is my favorite all-purpose kitchen knife? Would I ever consider doing a kitchen collection video? Chichif Chichify? Uh, Chichify? I don't even know how to say your name. Um, oh, good God. Now we've got fin Finnish coming at me. Hold on. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, what do we got here? Um, kitchen knives are an area that I haven't spent as much time in. I'm doing some looking at them lately, and I've definitely been impressed by some North Arm Knives, who actually makes the... Uh, come here, Skahatu. Uh, North Arm Knives of North Arm Skaha fame, uh, fame, that is, makes a really impressive set of kitchen knives, um, that I actually like very much, and that my, uh, I ended up getting, uh, getting one for my brother-in-law, who's a professional chef, and he's over the freaking moon with it. He's like, what, what is this steel? Is this magic? No, it says 35VN. He treated well. But anyways, um, I, but aside from that, I don't have a lot of experience in kitchen knives, so I'm not going that general approach. Um, I, I've been asked to uh, pronounce Hungarian, so we've got here, uh, oh God, what are the dots doing there? Tulut kapushta? Is that like something to do with cabbage? I have no idea, my friend. I, God, I hope I'm not saying terrible things in these languages. Um, oh, good God. Sorry, Finnish bro, that's a problem. Um, oh, Keith, you were very nice to me by sending me a box of junk. That's an absolutely wonderful thing. Um, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> send him the Horcrux knife and see if he thinks it's magic. Oh, Why? Why does this bother me? Like, I genuinely, like, I want to keep this in a metal lock box on my deck. I don't know what's going on there, but there's something. I need to find some way to turn this knife into good. It'll be a thing. Um, oh, cabbage. Okay, so it is kapushta. Excellent. Cabbage roll. There we go. Hey, that's better. All righty. Uh, I think kapusta is Russian for uh, cabbage.
Anyways, back at the ranch. Um, so yeah, uh, obviously Kramer, <laughs> Kramer does good work, right? In kitchen knives, there are lots of really good um things out there. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, Trevor Store, who's been asking me repeatedly, uh, uh, making a reference to the airplane movie series, uh, asked if I'm ever going to review Airplane as a movie series. Um, I will probably not review them, but they are, although aging quite poorly, uh, they, they, they are a beautiful thing. Um, how do I feel? about Casper Flips has how do I feel about ballad songs both the flipping and the functional aspects of them um Casper I really truly and genuinely am not very good with ballad songs I've tried with a trainer and it was just like I'm gonna kill myself not like in the sense of actively you know suicide is a problem if you're ever having troubles you know call the hotline and whatnot but no I, in the sense of i will probably end up with this embedded in my femoral artery if i keep trying to flip this thing and it was a trainer and i was still scared so i personally don't have the dexterity required to actually do any kind of acrobatic or frankly non-acrobatic ballast song use if you see if you hand me a ballast song i am more scared of it than it is of me um and so that's that's a thing to consider However, I definitely acknowledge that there are people who have amazing skill. You know, watching the uh, Ballast Song Flipping competition at Blade Show West, it was just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Um, and so, yeah, that's definitely that's definitely a thing. Um, we uh, So I, I, I can see that there's an appeal in Ballast Song world out there, but it's not necessarily appealing to me. Here, I'll throw some random stuff out on the table that is attractive to me, and, you know, that way people can have something to look at other than my hands. Um, let's see here. Um... I Rudgrud mit Flöde? I think that's Norwegian, maybe? I have no idea. Maybe if some of my Norwegian people are in the room, they'll let me know. Um, but nevertheless, um, have I considered to design my own knife? I have not. Um, and the main reason for that is that I, I'm not a designer, right? I'm, I'm just a jackass. Um, I, I, I'm very good at complaining about pocket knives, but I'm not very good at making them necessarily. And so I, I, I think very much that, you know, designing a knife would be interesting and cool. But if I did such a thing, it would have to be a collaboration with a, with an actual designer who I respect a lot, where I could say something like, you know, this is a, I, I want to see something like this. I want to see this. I want to see this. I want to see this, et cetera. And, and then something like that could come out. Um, so that would be great. Um, Abbas, unfortunately, I don't speak any Arabic at all. Oh, Danish. Okay, close enough across the water there. Um, anyways, I, I, sorry, that's not to diminish the country and whatnot, but, um, nevertheless, that's, that, that's definitely a thing. Um, so I, I, yeah, uh, that's probably what I am going to end up doing. Um, Mike O'Neill asks, do I have an Alemic whippersnapper in the works yet? So Alemic cutlery, folks who make this little guy, the, uh, busker, um, our uh, very, very nice, uh, company, and they have a new model coming out, the Whippersnapper, which is right up my alley, and yes, I do have an order with them, uh, in for that, and, uh, they are, uh, I think they say in a couple of weeks, maybe a month or something like that. Um, so there you go. Um, Mr. Brown Sound asks, <laughs> any thoughts on how to make friends and coworkers stop thinking about pocket knives as dangerous weapons? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I actually have a whole video on, uh, oh, what's the name of that video? It's something like dealing with fear and uh, or how to, you know, work with fearful people in the knife hobby. Um, so, oh, it's a Norwegian dialect. Okay, everything's a freaking Norwegian dialect, apparently. Um, anyways, I digress. Um, but I have a whole video talking about how to deal with fearful issues um, among people and how to kind of uh, work with it. But the fact is, for some people, you know, fear is really hard to overcome. You're not going to be sitting there doing cognitive behavioral therapy with these folks, trying to get them to accept the fact that you're carrying a pocket tool. But it's definitely a sort of thing. Um, let's see here. Uh, so I, I would recommend that you watch that video where I give my more um, com complete thoughts there. Um, let's see here. Oh, I, uh, I think that's Turkish. Oh, I, I'm, I'm running out of here. That's, again, more Arabic, and I can't help you there. So, this thing, this mask is an asshole. <laughs> Seriously, it was just it was lighting me on fire over there. So, and by the way, thank you for the donation there, Tommy. But, um, yeah. So, uh, th 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 I, I would definitely consider something other than Batman. But at this point in time, Batman has sort of become a signature of the channel here. Um, th th that's definitely been a thing. Um, let's see here. Checking the charity count. There we go. We have two donations. Wonderful. Um, we have a $20 donation. Uh, from, looks like, my buddy David, and we have a, uh, what do we got here? Holy sh... Uh, we have a $250 donation. Already... 
Holy sh... Okay. Uh, f to the Houston Area Women's Center. Uh... Whoa, uh, JW, thank you so very much. We have triggered, ladies and gentlemen, a Shabazzapalooza. We will be getting, <laughs> holy crap, it worked. Uh, we will be getting a brand new uh, video every day of the next week um, because JW and David both donated huge amounts of, holy crap. $250, you guys are amazing. Uh, donated to local domestic violence shelters. I am, God, I'm happy about that. That's magnificent. I love you guys so very, very much. In fact, I am so freaking grateful right now. I mean, I'm grateful generally. I started that off, but wow, that's amazing. Um, thank you very, very much ever, the, to the folks who've donated both to me and to, 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 to frankly, a better cause, right? Um, and uh, that, that that's a beautiful thing. Um, now I have to carry the green grenade. No, that, that that's $100,000, not $250,000. Keep it going. If, if I will confirm the donation, but if somebody wants to make the 100000 donation, I will do this. I will make this happen. <sighs> but anyways, um, yeah, that's a, uh, that, that, that's a beautiful thing. Um, <laughs> Travis Thor is asking if I would ever review a Viper toolbox. Oh, Travis Thor, you're a beautiful thing. Um, I, I am absolutely doing more in the way of toolbox reviews lately. Um, after really falling in love with the... Um, um, the, the Gerstner versions, I might definitely take a look at some of the more conventional uh, metal ones down the road, but uh, I'd have to find a good deal on it. You know what I'm after? Um, so anyways, there you go. Uh, let's see here. Why wasn't the Batman mask on the Nick Chabaz uh, Victorinox Classic? The biggest reason for that is just copyright reasons. Um, you know, the gem is a design that my designer who helped me out with this guy, R.E.W., check him out, R.E.W.com. Um, anyways, uh, this mask, or I'm sorry, this is my own, you know, all of this is art that's dedicated specifically to the channel. If I start throwing other people's trademarks on there, that gets a little bit uglier. So um, that's the reason we decided to go there. And frankly, I'm not actually Batman, or is he? Who knows? Anyways, that's a, uh, that's a beautiful thing. Um, 250 bucks, holy crap, you guys are awesome. Ah, uh, with that, actually, holy crap, I've been going for almost two hours. So I think with that, I'm going to go on ahead and wrap things up. I remain very, very grateful to everybody who's joined in tonight. You know, we peaked at around 250 viewers. Um, we looked at a bunch of really terrible knives. We raised 250, no, I'm sorry, more than that, uh, $276 for charitable causes which is a beautiful thing, and um, I am just so happy that you guys chose to, you know, join me for a small part of the Thanksgiving here. I'm so grateful for your ongoing support, whether it's in the form of this, or in the form of, well, frankly, this, or in the form of wonderful donations to wonderful causes. Um, you all are an absolutely beautiful thing, and I'm immensely grateful for each and every one of you who stopped in and who's going to watch this over the next course of the few days. So thank you very much, everybody, and uh, have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, bye now. <laughs>